we left off were relationships in the FileMaker are bidirectional automatically. And that's what they they tell us when we buy the product, that relationships established in bidirectional automatically, but not in every case, right? They have a relationship in both directions, the fields on both sides and both tables that you're relating, the table occurrences, the fields that have to be stored, and indexable. If they're not indexed when you make the relationship, they will become so when you build a relationship and use it. I believe it they that it actually because they index at minimal indexing in some cases the first time it's employed, not once actually attached. Is that correct? Uh, no, actually when you do the relationship, it actually is minimal indexing for that. When you commit it, which is another point I have a strong uh, belief around the conventions we'll get to that decide when you develop your system is the field going to be indexed or is it not going to be indexed and it fully index darn near every field that might be indexed eventually and set to, to not index those that will not with that with the checkbox for automatic indexing turn off in most cases. Otherwise you get a great 50,000 record solution to somebody with a field that's never been indexed because you didn't anticipate it. The first user goes to do a search on that field and they wait while the system decides to minimally index it, which might give them some possibility of erroneous results because it's not fully indexed, it's going to be a word index. Pretty standard. So keep that in mind, when we talk about bidirectional relationships in FileMaker, you have to consider stored fields and, index, and indexable fields, and also consider your indexing while you're at it. So here's two tables, company to contact, and somewhat popular than any convention. I've got a G in the, near the, in the prefix of this field, indicating that that's a global field, while on the right we have an indexable primary field that I'm relating to. So that's a global field on the left. An index field on the right. And find that little remote. It's not plugged in. Bob, can you just see that remote device back there? That's not. There is a relationship that's valid going this way from the global field to the index field, but there's no relationship in the reverse direction unless it's a Cartesian joint. Or some people call it a cross product joint. Who does not know what a Cartesian joint is? Well, this is easy. Okay. So there's no relationship in the reverse direction. It's going to be invalid because you can't relate from an index field back to a global field. So that kind of challenges the validity of counting on bidirectional relationships already hinting that we might want to look what, at a relational graph management technique that takes that into account. Top of that, bidirectional relationships only have meaning depending on where you are and what you're looking at. You could be looking at erroneous information. So here I'm, I've got a company with multiple contacts and this is set up with multiple phone numbers and the phone number is owned by the contacts, not, not, not the company. Okay. So the context is if I'm standing on a layout with a contact table, then I can see both the company name and the phone numbers. If I'm in the phone number based layout, then I can see all the way up to the company. But it could get erroneous. In this case, it's pretty simple. But since table occurrences could be viewed from any direction, you want to consider not only the context you're in, but the naming you're using. Always keeping context in your mind, in your mind when you're naming. And considering the value of a table occurrence relationship. So, here we extend it a little bit. Company contacts are phones, but the company also has invoices and invoice line items for products that it's selling. Pretty typical, right? But how valuable is it if I'm in the products table to be going through this relationship back over and look at phone numbers? This would be across multiple companies, across multiple contacts, multiple invoices and phone numbers. Kind of an erroneous generally from a point of view of, I'm sitting in the products table seeing a list of phone numbers that are available to me. It's kind of a, an erroneous situation. It's not useful. Although you'll be able to see it in, in the uh, scrolling value, in the scrolling lists. <clears throat> so the relational graph is where the developer does certain basic things. It's where you create table occurrences and join them. Such here, the two table occurrence groups that you can see are discrete. Ones here being currently highlighted are one particular uh, talk, 
It's also a place where annotation or comments about the table occurrences and the groups is kept. So here's, you're seeing where I have taken the, uh, the comments blocks available the alpha key there and colored them and put them behind the table occurrence groups to make it clear that it's a group. Here it's uh, not real clear, but it gets very clear when I use colored blocks to highlight them or shrinking them up and putting them up above the table occurrence groups and using these as breakers. I find this more useful than shrinking it up. The graph is also where essential to the data layer and important to the business layers. Three layers here that we talk about in data normalization. We have data, business, and presentation. Three layers in database development. Well, an ERD consider, cons um, concerns itself with the data layer purely. But the graph is where we have the data layer, the business layer, and the presentation layer. It's the basis of the presentation layer because file make is unified file format. Everything's going to happen in the same place. So all three things have to happen in the graph together. What the graph is not is an ERD, although sometimes it looks like one and can, can give you the sense that you are working in an ERD, you're not. There's other tools developed with ERDs in. There's Visio, uh, what you, what's that cool one? Omnigraphle? Omnigraphle. People like that on that. What do you use, Larry? I use Visio. Lee, what do you use? Omnigraphle. Omnigraphle? I use FileMaker. I draw little rectangles and lines, and <laughs> that way I can just uh, move it around and put it in the solution. Yeah, I kind of did that 20 years ago and I have that away from it, but it takes a little more work. It's also true now that Omnigraphle can actually read and write Visio. Nice. So Omnigraphle is a great tool. But those tools are designed, they do other things as well. They do, I mean, Visio has hundreds of different you know, pipeline schemas, electrical schematics, and all that, but it specifically has a module just for doing ERDs. The graph is not an ERD builder, it never will be. It wasn't intended for that. So here's an ERD, sort of. And did you build that in FileMaker? Yeah. <laughs> Just wondering. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Rectang rectangles and lines and circles, I did. <clears throat> for a project that we're uh, actively working on. It's That's not real complicated, but you've got customers and you've got contacts and phones, and see that we decided to put the phones attached to the contacts in the system. We also have offices, and then you've got a relationship between the office and the phone. So this actually ends up with a whole lot more relationships that aren't at the <clears throat> excuse me, ERD level. But this isn't exactly an ERD. Can anybody say why? It looks a lot like an ERD. Anything look funny? Well, the project contact three lines coming out of jobs. The joint tables? No. I, I, I mentioned it a little, hinted about it earlier. There's only could be one unique path between any two tables in an ERD. Right. Whereas here, I can get two projects from estimate by going through here and over. I can also come here. Okay. So it's almost an ERD, but for that line right there, which is needed for implementation. Because even though I make estimates for customers, multiple estimates for multiple customers, and eventually make projects out of them. To then go back and tie the project to contacts on a customer basis, it breaks it. So either this line has to go or this line has to go to make it an ERD. So it's not quite an ERD. This is more implementation. But, so if I removed one of them, I'd be at that level. But I needed to see this to understand what I'm doing. And this is still at a very high level. It doesn't have all the hundreds of table occurrences and joins and join proliferation I'm going to need for implementation. But if I remove that line, there we go. That's an ERD. Okay. It doesn't serve the function of telling you how to build it. No. Yeah, well, so that would be more of a, what type of diagram, Larry? Without that block, without that covering block, it's not an ERD, more of a, not a like cross of data flow diagram? Um, no, it's not a data flow diagram. It's a hodgepodge? It's not pure relationships between entities. It's, sure. it's more about business logic now. Sure. Kind of 